I hate to break it to you, but new riders that ignore this will fail. Maybe not right now, but eventually they will fail. I mean, the mountain bike, gravel bike, road bike, whoa, the bike does not care. If you don't have this one thing, you will fail eventually. Just imagine yourself bombing down a gravel road. All of a sudden there's a tight turn coming up and you're way too fast. And then you're looking down and you're like, what's the front brake? What's the rear brake? This can be detrimental, especially on gravel roads. Luckily, the question of what's the front brake, what's the rear brake, right, left, never really is really a question because there's not enough time to answer it because everything is a reflex. There is no decision making. It's hand-eye coordination. So in this video, I wanna give you some training instructions how to train your hand-eye coordination for bicycle riding. First of all, you're gonna think of how do we learn? How do we learn a new reflex? It's not a skill. So hand-eye coordination, how do we learn new reflexes? Well, we learned that certain situations require certain muscle groups to fire, which causes a reaction that desires to solve the problem at hand. That's a mouthful. Use your hands, use your eyes. Wow. There you go. Okay, so you solved the problem once. Does that mean you're done, you trained, you did it? No. This is gonna take a long time of repetition. Repeat, rinse, repeat. Again. One more time. It's gonna to take tons of repetition to make that, not just a skill to catch a ball, but actually a reflex, that those arms will go up and grab that ball when it comes hurling towards your face. Same about brakes. You kinda of need to know what is the front, what's the rear in a split second when you're bombing into that turn that's a little bit tighter than you thought it was. And what's the best way of learning? It's through games. That's how we learned as kids. That's how we learn how to play ball, catch balls. If you wanna play a game, oh, okay. You're not gonna be playing games anymore, you're an adult now. So, okay, let's not call it a game. Let's call it an advanced cycling life-saving skill tech tip. And uh, let's go with that. So we're not playing games here, we're just having a serious conversation how to not face plant. So all you really need is a piece of cardboard on gravel. Actually, I prefer a thin piece of plywood because it'll last a lot longer. Stake out a 10 foot section and move the plywood only with your rear wheel by applying the rear brake as soon as the wheel hits the plywood. This is going to teach you your timing and train your hand eye coordination for the rear brake. Same for the front wheel. You might want to ease into it a little bit because besides skidding, you're also going to lose the ability to steer and balance, which actually teaches you a valuable lesson that if you do lose balance, opening the brakes is the best thing you can do. Here's a perfect example. I hit the plywood, lock up the front wheel, and I start drifting to the right. I don't like it, I open up the brakes, and I regain my balance. Here's another look at it. This is exactly what would happen if you pull too much front brake in a turn. At this point, you need to let go of the brake to regain control of your bike. The next lesson is a little more advanced. If you can pop a wheelie and pull a little too hard and then use the rear brake to bring the front wheel back down, that's a great way for muscle memory training. This will be super useful for mountain biking if you want to do manuals. And then also, these reflexes are transferable between bikes. The advanced front wheel training is basically doing a stoppy and as soon as you're getting too high or uncomfortable, release the front brake and let the rear wheel drop back down. All right, let's talk about braking in general. Usually you have one or two fingers on a mountain bike on the brake lever. You know, one finger is plenty. That gives you four fingers to hold on. Um, if the brake's not that good, and sometimes also have a little better feel for it if you're using two fingers, but that only leaves you three fingers on the bars. So you have to have the grip strength to manage, you know, pulling on the handlebars, doing everything that you need to do with three fingers, which is a little harder to do. Uh, drop all bikes, like road bikes or gravel bikes, cyclocross bikes. You got two options. You got the down in the drops position, or you can be hands on the hoods. I prefer the hands on the hoods for off-road. It's a weird reach being in the drops. Some people like it. I think the majority of people, especially in cyclocross, prefer to be on the hoods. Cool, you did it. Uh, you know the difference between front brake and rear brake, but you might still have a problem here because what do you do when you get into the turn? Well, to find out what to do in that turn, you might wanna watch this video next.